Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm reviewing the Terra 75 gaming mechanical wireless RGB keyboard. This is from a company called ASIO, and right now at the time of this video, the keyboard is only available on Kickstarter. Normally, I would never ever cover a product that's only on Kickstarter, because there's obviously a risk associated with that. And I'm not gonna tell you there's no risk, just go do it. That's up for you to decide where to put your money. However, the only reason why I accepted this, well, I suppose there's two, is one, the styling really took me, uh, I'll admit. I love the, the options you can do with this, and I'll get into all that shortly. ASIO has been making keyboards for a long time. This isn't their first product, it's not a startup company. This is just to fund this project, this product model, but not all of their other keyboards. They have a long reputation that's been selling on Amazon for a while. They have tons of customer reviews, like legitimate reviews. I scour it, it's not bots. So I feel like there's more trust in the brand because it's not all new and people have been happy with their prior launches. They make some really nice and unique uh, looking keyboards. But either way, uh, between the looks and that, I felt okay enough to do a review, so here we are. Now I wanna talk about price real quick because there's a, a variance as far as what you can expect to pay and it also depends on your configuration. So the entry level early bird Kickstarter price is $140 and that's the Abyss model and the Moonlight model. So depending on what color you want, there's two variants that are more monochromatic. Obviously you still get RGB keys, you still get a cable. It's still wireless, it's not like you're paying for more features. All of the additional cost goes up to 160 and up depending on if you're no longer an early bird or if you want to purchase ex additional accessories such as a faceplate, volume knob, etc. Now my Terra 75 was the Abyss version. It was all blacked out, but I said, please send me this faceplate and surprise me with a knob because I wanted to mix it up. I'm going to talk about all the finish options, but mine came in this little black box. Also comes with a five foot long USB A to C cord. This cord is a detachable USB C to C and it comes with the A adapter. So depending on what you're connecting it to, it gives you everything you need there. Now one of the big selling points of the Terra 75 is the swappable face plates. This was what made me excited and I'll show you how cool that is. But basically you can get Damascus steel, you can get concrete, you can get this multi-chrome PVD finish, which is what caught my eye. And of course I mentioned the knobs. If you get additional face plates, it comes in a, a different but similar themed box. Now the Terra 75 is an extremely heavy keyboard and just to put that into perspective, I'm gonna show you the weight. 1,648 grams on my scale. That took me by surprise when I first opened it and I think that affected my perception of quality because it weighed so much, it's built like a tank. Here is the Dust Silver D84 I reviewed in the past. That board is 948 grams. So this Terra 75 board is almost double the weight of the Dust Silver board that I reviewed recently. And this is still a solid feeling board. I have keyboards that are 700 to 800 grams. I think it was the, the Drunk Deer A75. That board is like 800 grams, and that's also 75. So um, this has some weight. Now to further illustrate my point, I wanna show you how heavy the face plates weigh. These are metal face plates, they're not plastic. That face plate weighs 356 grams, just the top cover. So you can see why this board weighs so much. Naturally, if I take the cover off, it'll weigh less. I don't know if they're ever gonna do plastic versions later, but I don't care if a keyboard's heavy because it's not really supposed to be moved too much. So I wanna show you how to swap the face plates out. Now swapping face plates is easy. I'm gonna show you just how easy by removing the volume knob because you have to do that first. No tools are needed. And then there's magnets inside. See how I'll just pop that up and that's it. It is very secure and I can tell you with the volume knob installed, it doesn't feel like it's ever going to pop off. The magnetic strength is quite strong. You can see all of this, uh, these inlaid magnets here and then this white backer plate. Again, these face plates are heavy. You can buy multiple ones or if you're feeling crafty, you can always get a second one of the cheapest variant you can find and customize it yourself. This makes it easy for me to customize my keyboard and do my own unique finishes later if I ever wanted to and then still switch back in case I don't like the product or if I just wanna change themes. Now the Terra 75 comes with a keycap and switch puller because you can buy this in four different switches. They're hot swappable. They use Gatoron G Pros, which are great switches. And basically once the Kickstarter completes and you get your little survey to complete your order, they'll just ask you which switch you want. It's all personal preference. I think a lot of people buying these boards probably already know what kind of switch they like. But if you don't, blue is very clicky, brown is tactile, mine's using the brown. Then you have red and yellow for linear switches and they change with actuation force. I recommend doing some research if you're not sure which one you want. 
and I'll do a sound test in a moment compared to some other Gatoron Reds that I have. So I'm gonna put the faceplate back on real quick and I just wanna point out one thing. I don't know if the camera can get it, but basically you have these little bumps that stick out. That's to help align the faceplate properly in addition to the magnets holding it in place. The black one fits perfectly. My multi-chrome PVD kinda of has a sticking point on this right corner. This one pretty much just goes right in. And then on my multi-chrome PVD, I, when I push the volume knob all the way down, it just occasionally bottoms out and touches the chrome finish, which you can't see, but if you swap them to a smaller knob later or pull the knob off, you might see a little bit of scoring in the finish. So the black one doesn't do that. I think it just comes down to a millimeter of thickness, but you can push the volume down enough to not completely bottom out and leave yourself a little bit of space. I think you can always get a washer or something to space it out, but I just wanna point that out. That'll come, I think, over time as the uh, manufacturing process is refined a little bit. Now, both of my color configurations are high gloss. They are very reflective and shiny, and they look absolutely stunning, but they will show fingerprints and dust. There's no way around that. So if you're kind of a neat freak and you take care of your stuff and clean it often, these are gonna look absolutely gorgeous, but if you tend to not do that so much, just keep that in mind. It's like having a black car in the northeastern part of the United States. It looks great when it's clean, but that's very rare. So I just wanna show you the back of this now. The back continues with the gloss and you have this big old switch on the top. The switch looks kind of basic, obviously. You have this big printed font right here, but I don't know if that'll change. It's also odd that they put the switch inside the rubber foot, but either way, I guess it helps hide it uh, from sticking out. These feet don't come out too far, so I will point that out, and there's no adjustable uh, foot height. Now this board is thick. Um, if you look at the top down view, you can see quite a bit of thickness here. You can see the dust silver board has a little bit thinner profile, so the keys are starting higher on the Terra 75. And then if you look at the Drunk Deer A75, you can see an even thinner chin right here. Now this one has the adjustable feet to change the angle, but it is a little bit lower profile. If you're coming from a low profile keyboard and you're going to something like this, it is going to take a little bit of getting used to just for that height, but overall it wasn't too bad. Now in addition to being a USB-C keyboard, it's also a Bluetooth keyboard, and if you hold the function button, you actually have one, two, three, for different Bluetooth profiles to connect to different devices. I love implementing it that way because you can basically force a Bluetooth mode because some people, they don't just turn off the Bluetooth the, you know, to the device that they don't wanna to connect to and it can make it tricky to pair to multiple things in case both those devices are on in the same room. The USB-C port is on the top right, which usually I'm used to the left. There's no way to hide the wire, but it is what it is. That's where they placed it. And look, you can even see a couple extra fingerprints up top. Keep it clean. Now there are 19 RGB profiles as well. All you have to do is press and hold function. And if you tap the left arrow, it's gonna go through the different modes. Up and down is going to change your brightness. And when you're in that lighting profile, if you press the right arrow, it's going to change the color theme for that particular profile. So there are some patterns here, like you can see with this uh, fading and different colors throughout, you can make that a more monochromatic look, if you will. So you have a lot of customization options. And I like this because you may like a pattern or unique design like this one here where it's kind of like flickering a little bit. But let's say you're trying to tie that into the rest of your theme. You're not stuck in RGB mode where it has a bunch of different colors. You can add some color texture to your board, if you will, but then stick to a blue or a pink or whatever it may be. Now, if you're ever curious how much battery life you have left, just press function, hold it down, and then hold escape. And you can see it blinking on mine all the way up to F6. That's basically telling me I have half of my battery life left. So what would a keyboard review be without a sound test? Now I have a few keyboards here that have some similarities, but ultimately this is how different they could sound. So obviously I have the Terra 75. This is using the Gatoron brown switches. This is using Gatoron reds. Then I have a couple Hall effect switches. So this is the Drunk Deer A75 and then the SteelSeries Apex Pro. So I'm gonna type on the Terra 75 so you can hear it. And there is one inconsistency that I noticed. So just to cover the stabilizers, overall the keys are excellent. I have you know no stabilizer issues. I think the dust silver is just slightly tighter, but there is a little bit of a different sound on the space bar, whether you type on the left or right side. So I'm gonna start with that. That was the thing that stood out. I'm gonna type normal and then I'll go around the uh, edge of the board as well.
I'm going to type on the Dust Silver D84. Now the Apex Pro. Then the Drunk Deer A75. Space bars all around. So uh, I don't know how much you can pick up on this. I guess I should do like a tab uh, type as well. Ultimately, here's the thing. This board is extremely well dampened and if it didn't have that slightly different audio sound from the left or right space bar, it's one of my favorite sound profiles here. The Drunk Deer, or sorry, the Dust Silver D84 is an excellent board. I think it feels extremely solid. This feels extremely solid as well. The back plane is very stiff. Um, so basically the support plate behind the switches, there's no flex in it. It feels like a tank. I think this could be, again be because I have an early release. This is like pre-Kickstarter being completed. So this might be even better later. I'm just being honest based off what I've experienced. I do love the sound of this board. It feels dense and they use a triple layer um, of sound absorption technology to help combat some of that noise. It doesn't have the same resonance or ping that I have with the Drunk Deer. And I like the Drunk Deer board a lot because I think the looks are great for me, but there is a noticeable resonance in the chassis. And I said that in my review, you can hear it if I type really hard. And then you compare that to the Terra 75. You can hear the difference in overall volume. The board is not magnifying the sound a lot. So to me, I really like the way the 75 sounds. And I want to point out too, just to kind of finish the sound test, this is using the brown switch. The reds and yellows are actually more quiet than the brown. And this was already a really good performer there. So I can't even imagine what switching to the reds will be like. I'll likely do that at some point because I do like a quiet board naturally being a sound guy, but here we are. Things can change. I don't want this review to be the, I, I intentionally didn't go so down the rabbit hole of picking this board apart because it's still in Kickstarter. I don't know what will change later as far as what accessories you can get, what will be priced differently down the road. There are a lot of add-ons you can do on the Kickstarter. So if they have the aluminum knobs, if you will, and there's colors there, but they also have two different wooden knobs. You can go with a totally different look. In fact, there's a couple specs on there that I really like as far as a more relaxing sound or visual combination of finishes, whereas this is kind of more flashy or modern, depending on what you're looking for. I love this giant volume knob. It's literally just a personal preference thing. Some people are going to be like, wow, that makes the whole top of the keyboard huge. Well, so be it. I have large hands and I love having a knob that just feels so good. It's so smooth. And because it's using a standard pot style volume knob, you can technically buy different knobs later. Once you kind of figure out the specs, if you got one, you can probably make your own custom ones as well. And then of course, with the detachable face plates, now you can customize your own face plate. So whether you're really good at spray paint, vinyl wrapping, or just want to have different ones because it got scratched up after a while, there's a lot of versatility here. This is a great starting point and the retail price later is supposed to be about $200. That's still an insane keyboard to have this level of customization. The other thing I want to say that I liked is the keys for Mac and Windows. You don't have to switch them. I have a couple keyboards where you actually pull the cap off to switch it to the Mac or Windows keycap label, whereas this one shows both. So for people who tend to work on both machines, whether it's like one for gaming, one for productivity, whatever it may be, you have both buttons labeled there, which I really like. So that about wraps up the review. I made this video because I got excited when I saw it. So I wanted to share that with my viewers. That's literally the biggest reason why I love that you can customize the faceplate, the volume knob. Obviously, keycaps are a known entity for customization, but this level of uniqueness is awesome. And it just made something fresh for me. Gatoron switches are excellent switches and you can pick the style you want. I know for the same or less money, you can get magnetic Hall effect switches, which give you like the double input and unique actuation properties. However, for how I play and how good I am on a keyboard, that wasn't going to give me an advantage. What gave me more enjoyment with a keyboard was how this sounded, the fact that I can use it on my Mac or my uh, PC for gaming, all in one chassis with this level of customization, build quality, feel, sound. It's just a great combination. I'm not saying this board's for everybody, but hopefully it helps you decide if you want to invest and give this product a shot. Anyway, 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.